Welcome to Marty's Garden, a place where you can learn how to grow fresh food, organic food, sustainably using nature in your backyard. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to create a pest and disease free garden by building up habitat and allowing nature to take control of your garden. In our first lesson, we are going to discuss stories such as the lower story, the mid story, and the upper story, such as you can see in this red papaya here growing in my garden. So here we are in the lower story. Now this could be possibly the most important story of them all. Now the reason being is because this is where the soil is and the soil is where life begins. A healthy productive garden starts with a living soil. Now if you treat the soil as an organism, it will then reward you with lovely healthy plants. Now I want you to think a little bit out of the box and don't think about feeding the plants. Think about feeding the soil. In this way, the plants can live off the soil, the nutrition that's providing, and produce healthy, lovely, abundant fruits for you, and also have less problem with pests and diseases. So to create a living soil, guys, we need compost. Compost is the vital element, whether you've got sandy soil, whether you've got clay, or you've got loam, if you're adding compost to this, you're gonna create a living soil. And what happens is, is all the organisms are gonna start coming in and this soil's gonna get better like a fine wine over time. And that's what you want. And once you start building your layers, the animals start coming in and they're burrowing and breeding, the worms are coming up and working down, the big earthworms are coming up and grabbing the material down, the small compost worms are going across and composting all that material. And then what happens is your soil starts becoming alive. Then all the different bacteria and microbes start breeding and the fungi starts moving in. And all of a sudden you have a living organism that, I, that is basically feeding your plants. This plant that you're looking at here is called Kangkong in Asia. And it's actually a type of, well, they call it a water spinach. It's not actually a spinach, but it strikes really well from cutting and it grows along the ground. It loves the summer heat and it goes perfectly down here in the bottom story. And the beauty of it is, is that in the winter time, it dies right back and then strikes again in the summer. It produces a ton of food and I harvest from it daily and get cuttings for my friends that live nearby. This little tree here that you see growing in the lower story is an avocado tree. Now it's growing in my straw bale. And the reason I've left it here, because these guys will take years and years, up to seven years to fruit, is because I want it to work in the garden. At, currently at the moment, it's providing habitat in the lower story and providing roots for the microbes and photosynthesizing, sending the sugars down. And over time, this tree will become a mid-story plant and become habitat for insects. And then it will go up into an upper story plant, which will become habitat again for little insects and birds and things like that once it reaches into the top story. And then I'll just keep cutting it back because they prune really well. And I'll shape it to protect the garden down below. And I'll use it to climb up plants such as beans, cucumbers and tomatoes. So let's take a look at the mid story. Here you can see some lemongrass spilling through. I've got some lemon verbena growing here and some pineapple sage over here. And I call this my herb section, but really it's been planted out as a mid story for the insects to come and hide, little birds to come and hang off and hide in here and hunt, and spiders and all types of creepy crawlies to go through. And what they do is they all, they're all hunting. The, well, basically what's going on is you've got the herbivorous insects coming in here and eating a few of these plants here. And then the carnivorous are coming in and feeding on them as well. Now, I do lose a few leaves here and there. My garden is not perfect but it never ever sees any chemicals or any sprays. And I'm still able to come out and harvest from my tea garden as often as I like, which is just absolutely awesome. Now, if you plant out your mid story, you can harvest from it quite regularly because you need to keep it thin. And that way you've got lots of food and you keep providing the habitat that's needed 
for all the wildlife in your garden to create that perfect balance. So let's get into the upper levels, talking about the upper levels. Now this is the place where the birds hang out and they come down, they dive down, grab insects while they're flying, the willy wagtails dive down, come back up. So they feel safe from the predators. And this way they can hunt and get rid of you know things like cabbage moth and they'll fly down and hang on the edge of a plant and, and then grab like a caterpillar and then whoosh, scoot back up again and look around, call out to their mates. It's unreal watching them hunt and they clean up all those pests in the garden. Now look, you're basically, you're always gonna lose plants, no matter what it is. But if you've got the habitat right, and that includes the upper story, you're gonna be one step ahead for getting your garden into more of a productive zone where it's pest free. <laughs> I think so. You're going to see that assassin bug, right? It wants to eat it. I'm sure it would. He's going to move up there to hunt for him. We better put that assassin bug back. What do you reckon? Yeah. So you can find bad bugs. <laughs> Here is an assassin bug that was found in our garden. Now these guys are ferocious carnivorous hunters and will predate on even insects twice their size. And if you've got these in the garden, they will clean up a lot of the bad pests. Even stink bugs, they love eating them. So we never ever stop learning when we're gardening guys and organic gardening is just the same. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And it's just, that's just how life is, right? But what I wanna let you know is don't give up. If you're only, a starter, you're only just starting out and you've got a small garden, think of your tomato plant as a high level. And then your basil is the second level and maybe some creeping herbs like a mint or something going through down the bottom. Put a little tray of water for the lizards to come along the bees to get a drink. Not too deep so they don't drown inside. You put a couple of pebbles in there, that even helps. And then just think about putting a little rockery around the outside, just a few bricks for the lizards, little skinks to bake on, and they'll come out and hunt and grab those, those little insects and things. A lot of this is going on when you don't see it behind the scenes. And if you see some eggs on one of the leaves, don't freak out. Try and find out what type of eggs they are because they may be like, at the larvae of, um, not cabbage moth, but actually of like the assassin bug like you saw before, or the lady beetle. And they're heavy predators and they'll, the lady beetle will clean up your scale and your aphids and they're, they're a great one to have around. Now just keep an eye out for the 24, I think it's 24 or 29 spotted lady beetle. They're the bad ones that'll come through and eat a few things, but they don't really eat that much. And if you've got a praying mantis like Karen got out of the garden down there, we've got a few praying mantis, he'll come along and bang and grab that anyway, because they eat just about everything. Anyway, guys, look, there's lots of stuff. As I said, we can keep on learning. And I'd really like to hear from you down below, you expert gardeners that have got something to add down there and can help the others that are reading this. Or if you've got a question about anything that I've said, I'm happy, I'm really happy to hear from you and to answer down below what you might wanna know. All right, have a great day, happy gardening, and we'll see you at the next video real soon. We're gonna still head off and visit those gardens, guys, just waiting for my knee to heal up. Other than then, I'm just gonna be filming here and just producing the cool content. Bye for now. What have you found, Karen? Oh, I'm on my crutches here, so it's going to be hard getting it over, but we'll get over here. Where is he? Is he coming my way? Yep. Which way? That way. Maybe I need to. I'll get down. Here he goes, here he goes. Oh, I missed him. Hang on, hang on. Where is he? There he is. That's a baby blue tongue. Check him out. Do you want to catch him, Karen? No, he's going to bite me. One time I tried to catch it, and he didn't bite me. You've caught bigger ones than that, though. But that one tried to bite me. And he wiggly one. You need to grab him from behind, that's why. Hey, you know. How come you're scared? I've never seen you scared before. He was in. He was in there um, getting strawberries and snails. Oh, okay. That's pretty much what we were talking about in the video just then, isn't it?